Hi, my name is Vanna Smalley and I'm presenting my JCM 413 think piece called Directioners. Everyone who was born before 2010 likely knows what this is. It comes in all kinds of forms and fashions, and the experience is ultimately shared all over the world. What would this decade be without fangirling? Or, that is to say, what would this past century be without fangirling? And the band that can arguably be placed at the forefront of the fangirl craze? One Direction. The One Direction fandom, deemed Directioners, is notorious for its enthusiasm. Even five years after the boys have departed on an indefinite hiatus and each embarked on their solo singing careers, a good portion of fans remain intact, especially on social media. What is it about these five young gentlemen that keeps people holding on? One Direction was formed when all five of the boys auditioned in 2010 for the UK's X Factor individually. Judge Simon Cowell saw potential in them, but not by themselves. So he put them together and almost immediately they started gaining traction with fans. From the behind-the-scenes video diaries to the show performances, people started falling in love with One Direction, and they were not quiet about it, especially on social media. Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, and the story-writing websites Wattpad, Quotive, Fanfiction.net, and Archive of Our Own all began to explode with One Direction content. The Directioners had created their own world, one that they lived in daily and knew how to navigate like the back of their hand. I was part of that world, but was not an expert by any means, but I knew some who were. The next slide is answers from my interview with Stan Anonymous, as in Stan Anonymous. She has been a One Direction fan since their first album, Up All Night, released in 2011. She has a decent following on both Twitter and TikTok One Direction specific accounts. She has chosen not to disclose her real name and face due to safety concerns. I know a lot of people are like, oh, you think about them like a lot and a lot of your life revolves around them. And I wouldn't say that my life revolves around them. It just gives me a source of comfort because a lot of people are going through different things at different times in their lives and it just kind of gives me a good distraction as does One Direction Stan Twitter and I've met some great people on there through One Direction. I've even met some in person before and I still talk to them years later so that's really fun to me. It's, kinda, it's, a, it's a great way to bring people together honestly even if some people do dislike each other within the fandom. Everyone is still, for the most part, very uplifting, and I don't know, it just kind of gives you somewhere to go whenever you're not feeling great. The three pillars to web navigation as a directioner goes as follows. Fan accounts, fan fiction, and streaming. Through these internet instruments, the directioners have become one of the most formidable and committed fandoms of all time, even after their five-year split. Fan accounts are the universal experience across all social media platforms. Although some fans may choose to not specifically create a fan account for the band, they can still choose to follow others and increase the likelihood of One Direction content in their timeline. Fan accounts involve three directioner practices, member picking, updates, and interaction. Member picking can and will be applicable to most boy bands, but directioners almost always have a favorite. Picking a favorite can be important when following or creating fan accounts online because of specialized content that comes in news feeds or suggestions. Stan Anonymous' favorite member, for example, is Louie, so she may choose to follow Louie's specific fan accounts. Many social media directioners nowadays, particularly on Twitter, will even include their favorite member as their profile picture or honor them in their headline or bio. It can be said that member picking of One Direction is even more prominent now that the boys have all gone their separate ways on solo careers. These are Stan Anonymous's thoughts when asked about member picking. I think that they are just drawn to a certain member, and I couldn't really give you a reason as to why, but I don't know, everyone just has their favorite, and some people claim that they don't have a favorite, but I don't buy it. Everyone has a favorite. Mine is Louie, so... And how do you feel that Louie being your favorite has impacted you as a person? Well, you know, there is a theory that all Louie fans are lesbians, and I'm a lesbian, so there's that. But he's also, he's just like a super, I find myself being slightly similar to him in a lot of aspects. We're both very chill, and we don't really stir up anything, and we kind of just stick to ourselves and mind our business. 
Next is updates. Upon making or subscribing to a fan account, the Directioner will often receive updates about the boys. It can range anywhere from location to new song releases to spotting them with a significant other. These were obviously very active and popular during One Direction's production period of 2010 to 2016, but the amount has subsequently decreased since the band split. They do still exist, though, if only to report news on the members' solo careers. Yeah, of course there's always the update accounts have been there since day one. And I've noticed, uh, this is a slight psychoanalyzation of Stan Twitter, I have noticed that since One Direction, like, broke up, that back in the day it was a pretty, like, peaceful place, and everyone, like, stayed in their lanes, they did whatever, and everyone just, like, had a good time, but now that One Direction is broken up, there's no content, so everyone's bored, so they're constantly starting things or making new like sub like categories for the fandom which i don't understand majority of the time but yeah there's like a bunch of stuff like on there there's listening parties update accounts a lot of people talk about just anything that comes out about them that's usually what they'll talk about for the next few hours and last we have forming connections once following each other directioner fans and fan accounts will become mutuals aka mutual followers sometimes this can lead to private and direct conversations or if there are several people in a group group chats where everyone can simply discuss whatever they want about the band this experience was completely unique to the boy bands of the 21st century and for some has created long-lasting bonds i didn't really have any friends like in real life like my actual friends who liked one direction all of them more or less gave me crap for liking One Direction and that like Stan Twitter was the place where I talked to people about One Direction and that was really the only place for a while that I could talk to anyone about it. I guess One Direction as a whole is they kind of sort of broke that boy band stereotype as with like NSYNC and all of those boy bands you know they had like the they had like the whole like matching, everything matched going on, but One Direction, they all had their own separate personalities. And I think that that drew a lot of people in and just like, they always taught you to like, once again, I'm gonna sound cheesy, but to just be yourself, be individual, don't follow a path that everyone else is following because where's that gonna get you in life? And I feel like everyone just kind of unites with that. The next pillar to discuss is fan fiction. Fan fiction exists in many, many different forms, but I don't believe any are as passionate or so numerous as One Direction's. As I mentioned earlier, there are several fan fiction websites that fans will visit, including, but not limited to, Wattpad, Quote of, the one I was on, fanfiction.net, and Archive of Our Own. In these fan fictions, there are a few options for writers to take, but first we'll circle back to member picking. Oftentimes, a writer will write a story about their favorite member because they know them best, or if it's a romance, they want to express those romantic feelings through their characters. Speaking of characters, authors like to create original characters, or OCs, to pair with their chosen 1D member. Or, if it's a point of view story, they will simply write Y slash N for the place of your name, the reader. And finally, an author's last option is to pair the boys with other existing people, usually another member. Larry Stallinson, the pairing between Louie and Harry, is the most popular pairing of the band and has even received attention from the HBO show Euphoria. Well, I think specifically there's like a bunch of different types of fan fiction out there in the One Direction category, and the main two are like Harry and a girl, or Larry Stylinson, which is Harry and Louie. So I feel like people either lean towards one or the other or just don't read any at all. And the people who specifically read the hairy ones, I'll be honest, half of them just want to see themselves in that girl's shoes. That is what they want to see, which can be concerning to a point, considering the way some of them are written. Um, specifically, a lot of the hairy fan fictions, I vividly remember reading specifically these two back in 2012, 2013. They were called After and Dark. They were very infamous, and even now, there are very popular ones that people talk about every single day after it came on to become a movie. And there's some very beautiful Larry ones as well that have been, like, people have contacted the authors to publish them. These people make money off of just sitting down and writing about whatever, which is kind of crazy to me. I mean, good for them. And our third and final pillar is streaming. Streaming is the newest way to download music in the modern world, as opposed to the 90s with NSYNC and Backstreet Boys where tapes and CDs could be purchased. 
Since One Direction is a band, after all, streaming music plays a huge part of web navigation for Directioners. YouTube is especially big for fans because of music videos and unreleased or leaked songs that are posted. Fans can interact here too with the comment section. With streaming platforms like Apple Music and Spotify, One Direction playlists can be shared amongst fans that include both the band's discography and all of their solo career songs. Directioners have such a powerful presence on the web that when Liam Payne tweeted about a potential band reunion last year in 2020, fans began a worldwide listening party and got hashtag 1D online concert stay at home trending on Twitter in celebration. Well, once again, we can't we get into the common misconception that everyone thinks that these girls like One Direction because of the way they look, but majority of the discussions I see about One Direction, it is about their music. And it's usually debates on their music and what's good and what's not. But people, so many people just completely discredited their music for so long because teenage girls was, that was their main fan base and people didn't take them seriously. So therefore One Direction was not taken seriously. But their music is truly for everyone in a way. I mean, was it very tight knit for a while and very like poppy? Yes, but then once they started writing their own music, which a lot of people don't do, people don't realize that, but they did so much in the writing and producing process that you truly get a sense of what kind of artist they truly are. So, if the Directioners are able to navigate 1D World online, what could they possibly be like offline? Well, they're just as passionate. And if you don't believe me, watch the first video of this presentation again. And to conclude, these are my sources.